my thing is like whether you disagree with his process and how he went about things, I want to see every independent and third party candidate. Um, I want to see them all on all the ballots because I want to see actual democracy taking place. Yes, even though I disagree with certain people on certain things, yes, they democracy wise, principle wise, they need to be on that ballot. So I want them all to get as much ballot access as they possibly can. So Dr. West getting ballot access, when? Dr. Jill Stein having access, when? Jasmine Sherman, when? Right? Um, Dr. Shiva being on ballot, when? Ha you know, them all being on the ballot is, is a win in my book because actual democracy is a good thing. Dr. Cornell West uh, has let a cat out of the bag, and this is proven to be more positive news for him. And so I just like to get into this. This is going to be a really quick segment, but I think it's worth noting that Dr. Cornell West has actually gotten ballot access in the state. So we're going to go to that. And Dr. Cornell West actually announced this on his Twitter page. So let me enlarge this and we will give it a read. Dr. Cornell West says, joyful news. Thanks to the Aurora Party, I am the first independent candidate to secure ballot access for the 2024 U.S. presidential election in Alaska. Heartfelt gratitude to my Alaskan brothers, sisters, and siblings for this milestone. Our campaign champions public ownership over corporate greed, environmental protection, including opposing the Willow Project and the bold abolition of poverty with a universal basic income inspired by the legacies of Martin Luther King Jr. and Fannie Lou Hamer. Alaska is also pioneering with ranked choice voting, a model for our nation. Let's head, let's, I'm sorry, let's lead the charge for truth and justice. So this is him saying that he's on the ballot. Now let's go in and take a look at what he said exactly. I would first like to thank my precious brothers and sisters and siblings of the Aurora Party in Alaska for putting me on the ballot from the bottom of my heart. I say thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm concerned with four issues. One, I want public ownership state-owned enterprises to supplant the private corporations obsessed with profit and downplaying the social needs of people and the flourishing of the natural beauty of the environment. Two, I want to cancel the Willow Project as but one moment in a larger vision of ensuring that there's regulation for environmental protection in Alaska. Three, because I'm so dedicated to the abolition of poverty based on the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. and Fannie Lou Hamer, Alaska can be the first state to not just abolish poverty, the 11% of our precious citizens in Alaska living in poverty, but have universal basic income. Alaska leading the way. And then last but not least, ranked choice voting. Again, Alaska leading the way. A central plank in our platform, rank choice voting. Alaska, thank you. Let us be on the cutting edge for truth, just, and love. Okay, so that was from Dr. Cornell West. Now, as far as this video goes, uh, I would like to just have a little bit of a commentary to break this down from what exactly he says, because I think this is important. And I'm hoping to see more people lay out some other policy positions like this. I like, I have been, uh, you know, critical of some of the how can I put it? Some of the, pol uh, not policy, but I have been critical of some of the stylistic uh, things that Dr. Cornell West has done. Um, as far as stylistically, I think that 
for him, it is important to lay out policy by policy, stick to those policies. Because unfortunately, and like myself a little bit, he can be a little bit long-winded and want to kind of go off on a bit of a, a tangent. And from what I'm hearing, because as somebody who's never actually been to college, a lot of academics can be long-winded in that way. And so with Dr. Cornell West, I would say that sticking to and using the policy positions as the sticking points is actually the best course of action to go. Always talking about it whenever somebody talks about an issue that goes on within the country, go back to your policy positions and hammer them down, nail them down so that nobody can say, oh, we don't know his policy positions. If I say Bernie Sanders 2020 campaign, what was the number one policy? You instantly know. You can say, boom, Medicare for all. So the same thing has to go for people like Dr. Cornell West, Claudia De La Cruz, Dr. Shiva, um, and Dr. Jill Stein, Jasmine Sherman, these different folks, you have to know what they're about. Like for instance, if I say RK Jr., the moment you're gonna talk about, think about is the jab. That's the first thing you think about, right? Now, forget how much I disagree with him on you know a number of issues, especially on the illegal occupation of Palestine, right? But one of the things that he does is hammer home is that his position particularly, there's two positions that he particularly is on that you know where he stands is the issue regarding Israel and the issue regarding, an issue regarding the jab. So you knew exactly where he stands. The thing is when it comes to Dr. Cornell West is you need to know and this is something I would express to him. You need to hammer home the top, just two positions. It doesn't have to be any more than that, that people can reliably say, okay, this is what he's on, right? Because as somebody who probably doesn't know anything about him outside of my door, this is what they're going to be asking. Well, what is he for? Because people are sick and tired of going for what they're against, right? So. Let's take a look and go in because I'm being a little long winded myself. I would first like to thank my precious brothers and sisters and siblings of the Aurora party in Alaska for putting me on the ballot from the bottom of my heart. I say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm concerned with four issues. One, I want public ownership state-owned enterprises to supplant the private corporations obsessed with profit and downplaying the social needs of people and the flourishing of the natural beauty of the environment. Now, first of all, this is actually something that he could highlight more often while on the campaign trail, basically meaning a uh, a stationalizing and a municipalizing some of the more important industries that are really, you know, that really preserve us alive. For instance, the, like the medical industry. I think the medical industry that includes big pharma, the medical device manufacturers, hospitals, and clinics, and the like should be really owned and ran by the people. It should not be a for-profit industry. So for instance, when people wanna talk about, for instance, what Dr. West is for, well, is he for a, um, a single parent healthcare system, which to me, a single parent healthcare system is not good enough anymore. I actually want a fully nationalized healthcare system. But if he can start saying, well, I'm for a nationalized healthcare system, similar to what they have in, for instance, places. I mean, people are gonna criticize you if you say the Cuba model. So I would say the, the UK model of full nationalization of the healthcare system, as well as big pharma, because if you, know, you start talking about the issues with pharma regarding with the jab, and you say, well, we should have it completely ran so that it does not have ties to profit, then that also could alleviate some people's 
uh, some people's angst, especially over the last three years regarding the pandemic. So that is one thing. But it also it talks about he's talking about uh, having complete ownership over it so that the it, if profit's not tied to it, then it does not put people's lives at risk. And then he can just expound on that. So I think that is a positive thing. I think that he should talk about a little bit more. So I say that's a good one. And also talking about how preserving the environment, I think that's something that a lot of people can get behind, can get behind as well. Two, I want to cancel the Willow Project as but one moment in a larger vision of ensuring that there's regulations for environmental protection in Alaska. Three. So as far as environmental protection, this is a big one and this will be a major win, especially among younger people, especially Gen Z, as well as the emerging Gen Alpha. I think this is something that is very good to hone in on. Uh, of course, he's got competition because he has Dr. Jill Stein to go up against, who is also big on environmental issues. So my thing is, is that if you're going to go hard, go hard on environmental issues as well, because yes, you know, Dr. Cornel West and Dr. Jill Stein are, you know, pretty much almost completely aligned on many issues. If he wants to beat Dr. Jill Stein in this game, he needs to also go hard on environmental issues to really wake up and to appeal to younger voters, especially because the future of our planet is very important to them. Oop, I didn't need to do that. All right, let's continue. Three. Because I'm so dedicated to the abolition of poverty based on the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. and Fannie Lou Hamer, Alaska can be the first state to not just abolish poverty, the 11% of our precious citizens in Alaska living in poverty, but have universal basic income. Alaska leading the way. So as far as a UBI is concerned, um, I'm a little bit on the fence when it comes to UBI, and um, let me tell you why. The problem with the UBI, in my personal opinion, is that it doesn't account for when corporations will raise their rates and prices in order to eat up the UBI, so therefore you end up back in square one. I'm personally more in favor of a universal basic services, meaning that there are services that are given to everyone so that they do not go without. So universal basic services like housing for all, universal basic services like giving everyone SNAP benefits and then redoing the poverty level. So basically going according to the what we have as far as the the income levels in in regards to you know the ratio of income levels uh, as far as inflation is concerned. So uh, if you're making if your housing costs are more than thirty percent of your income, then I think automatically you should get SNAP benefits. Because you're literally putting your, you're literally in poverty if, if you're paying more than 30% of your income on your rent. So if your rent is, you know, if, you're, if your rent is $3,000 a month, I'm sorry, if your rent's $1,000 a month, but you're making only $3,000 a month, well, yeah, or just under that, then you should be getting SNAP benefits automatically. That's just my opinion, but I know that's going to sound crazy to a lot of people. And then on top of that, having universal health care as well as a uh, tuition-free public colleges and universities in addition to all that. So it's like universal basic services so that people can, and then also having a federal job or a stational jobs guarantee. Uh, a federal jobs guarantee would be prime because then it means that everyone is, you know, entitled to a job. And so 
those jobs are universal. And then you actually use the minimum pay for that to force private companies to increase their wages as well. So let's say under a federal jobs guarantee, uh, the minimum wage that you can have under a federal jobs guarantee is $35 an hour, right? So everybody will be like, well, I'm just going to go with the federal jobs guarantee and not be within a private company. But then private companies aren't going to have anybody work for them. And if private companies aren't going to have anybody work for them, that means that they're going to have to pay what at least what the federal jobs guarantee pays. And so then if somebody actually wants to go into the private sector, then they are going to be able to do that. Now, that's going to sound kind of weird to people. It's like, well, wait a minute. Well, the government is going to be competing with businesses. Well, yeah. And the thing is, is like if you actually want to have businesses that are going to do well, then they need to pay top dollar. Because the thing is that the government's already setting the price when it comes to a minimum wage. So they might as well also give people the opportunity so that they won't have, uh, so they won't be put in the position where they literally have to beg for scraps from the corporations, essentially. And let's go to the last one. And then last but not least, ranked choice voting. Again, Alaska leading the way. A central plank in our platform, ranked choice voting. So ranked choice voting uh, is also a fairly better system than what we have. So you don't have to just have one pick and then that's it. You can actually rank all your picks within let's say you could have five different picks. So your first pick, let's say hypothetically that you want to pick Dr. Joe Stein as your first pick. Okay, first pick. Then your second pick can be Dr. Cornel West. Then your third pick can be people, somebody like uh, Dr. Shiva. I'm just placing people in whatever spots. And then your fourth pick and fifth pick and so on and so forth. So if your first pick does not win, then your second pick, will get chosen. And so that is something that I think is really important that a lot of people can look into. I think ranked choice voting uh, is a better step in the right direction so that you don't feel like you have to choose the lesser of two evils. You can actually choose what you want and then you can rank them. And so then if your first pick, you know, doesn't do very well as far as in, in the votes, then maybe your second pick will do better than your first pick. And then your second pick is like, oh man, I didn't get the primary person that I wanted, but at least I got the secondary person that I wanted. Instead, you know, so then your final pick can be the person that you feel like has the least of what you want. So. But yes, uh, he is now on the ballot in Alaska. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention and we shall see uh, over the next few uh, months as far as the ballot access and see if he makes it a little bit better. So hopefully, you know, people like Dr. West, because my thing is like, whether you disagree with his process and how he went about things, I want to see every independent and third party candidate. Um, I want to see them all on all the ballots because I want to see actual democracy taking place. Yes, even though I disagree with certain people on certain things, yes, they democracy wise, principle wise, they need to be on that ballot. So I want them all to get as much ballot access as they possibly can. So Dr. West getting ballot access, win. Dr. Jill Stein having access, win. Jasmine Sherman, win, right? Um, Dr. Shiva being on ballot, win. You know, them all being on the ballot is is a win in my book because actual democracy is a good thing. In fact, I am so for democracy, I actually want to expand it to the workplace. That's how much I like democracy. Communists love democracy, by the way. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. So 